I'll be brick. We'll contact back. the other stations. We establish an exact location. Still denying the possibility of a super eruption. Norris, uh, what, as I've said to you before, Miss Chin, Norris was a hydrothermal event and by no means a surefire indicator of volcanic activity. And certainly not on the scale that you are referring to. Nevertheless, we have issued a code red warning because we don't take these things lightly. Yes. But you Daddy. Yeah. He's getting famous. But you can't rule out a super eruption, can you? It's hard. Likely as an asteroid strike, according to some experts. And half as unlikely as being struck by lightning, Miss Chin. And not how many of us lose sleep over that? That's all the time we have. Thank you. Too much politics, not enough science. Okay, are we ready to run this simulation? Let's yep. do it. All right. So what I'd like to do is run through a couple of potential scenarios here. Right, right, we've got another quake just over a mile south of Norris. Okay, how big? 1.9. 1.9, okay. Now, this anomaly that we've discovered near Norris, now this could be water and gas as we know, or worst case scenario, it could be a new pod of uh, eruptible magma. So I want to concentrate our simulations around this area and see what uh, the potential damage could be, okay? Mm -hmm. So, option number one. Let's say that uh, we've got one cubic kilometer of eruptable magma. Okay, and uh, drop it. Run it. No eruption. Based on option one, seems not. All right, then let's keep all the other parameters the same, uh, but increase it by five, so we'll make it five cubic kilometers. Okay, how big is this? Moderate BEI-2. BEI-2, and duration? Over approximately three days. But that amount of magma could have been a lot bigger. Okay, let's increase it by another factor of five and uh, make it 25 cubic kilometers. Okay. Whenever you're ready. BEI-5, Mount St. Helen size. Right. So, ten times more magma, a thousand times more eruption. Potentially. Okay, so let's increase it by another factor of five and make it 125 cubic kilometers. This time, let's just, let's just run it this time just from the hydrothermal blast. Sure. The EI-5 again. Okay. EI-5 again. What happened? Computer glitch. Okay, tell me what we just saw. All right. All right, I'll state it. If we have a reservoir of meltdown there that's larger than 125 cubic kilometers, then this model is telling us that even a moderate eruption near Norris could destabilize the rest of the chamber and trigger a... Uh... BEI-8. Super eruption. <laughs> That's great, great. And if frogs had wings, then they wouldn't bump their little green asses hopping around. Eh? <laughs> if, if there was a pocket of melt over 125 cubic kilometers, then a possible eruption at Norris may trigger further eruptions, which maybe, just possibly, could register as VEI-8. Brilliant, great. Jesus, you're letting yourself be spooked by a, by, by a video game. Oh!
Yeah. Hey, it's Nancy. You better get up here right away. Okay. So where's this uplift concentrated? Here. Firehole River Basin. Some males will notice. Hey, hey, hang on. The question is, is this rising magma or is this groundwater? I could make a plausible case that either. Yeah, I know you could. Another 2.2 to the northeast of Norris. That's the thug today. So, we got another swarm coming. I need the SRI data for the entire park. Could we get more instrumentation down at Firehole River Basin? Ah, if we steal them from elsewhere. Well, I'll steal them. The ground uplift, earthquake swarms, rising levels of carbon dioxide, and the, the hydrothermal event. All of these things can be indicators of volcanic activity. Equally, they can mean nothing. We closed the park to be safe. But that didn't stop the hordes of people coming to check it out for themselves. Hey, Rick! Rick! Hey! Miss Chin. Can we come in? Look. I've got to cover this one way or another. It's my job. Okay. Do you want to cover this? All right, then you need to understand what it is that you're covering. Yeah, it's me. Get me Matt. Okay, come on in, Maggie. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. It's not the crew, okay? Come on through. Just not the crew. It's me. Uh, we're going to give uh, Maggie Chin the tour. There. You're looking at the northwestern rim of the giant caldera. It's where the ground fell over a thousand feet after the last super eruption. So we're in the volcano. Sure are. You know, I thought we'd take a little drive to the other side. So, what can you see? Yellowstone Lake. Okay. Now look out across the lake to that range of mountains on the far side. The Absarcus. That's right. How far would you say those mountains are from here? How far? Uh, Ten miles? Uh, roughly fifteen. Now those mountains are where you'll find the eastern edge of the giant caldera. The western edge is about another fifteen miles behind us. From north to south, it's even further. It's over fifty miles. So that's... About 45 minutes of driving and we're still only in the center of the volcano crater. What's your point, Matt? My point is, if this thing erupts, you'll die. If you think you're going to win some award or get promoted because you knew about this first, you won't. There won't be anyone around to give you your pat on the back. Ma'am, you need to get some perspective. 